Well, welcome to part one of our Switch Easter mini-series, Light in the Dark. In this two-part series, we're gonna look at the two most significant events in all of history, the death of Jesus on Good Friday and his resurrection from the dead on Easter Sunday. This week, to kick things off, we're going to focus on Jesus' journey from the moment of creation up until his death by crucifixion in order to answer three big questions. Question number one, who is Jesus? Question number two, what did he come to do? And then question number three, why did he have to die? To kick things off, we're going all the way back to the beginning. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him, all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. In the beginning, darkness gave way to light. The source of life and light formed the universe and filled it to reflect His glory. And the crowning jewel of creation, the part that was always intended to enjoy the closest connection to the light, was not the sun or the stars, but me and you. People created in the image of the Creator. But. It didn't take long for things to take a dark turn. Human beings rebelled against God. Sin invaded the world, ripping apart our connection with God. Now, instead of life and light as the defining qualities of God's creation, death and darkness dominated our story. But even in our darkest moment, God refused to let the light of hope be extinguished. He promised that once again, light would come into the world and the darkness would not overcome it. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. Jesus is the true light and He came to bring light to everyone, to people who didn't realize they were stumbling in the dark. Jesus is the way. To people who didn't know they were blinded by lies, Jesus is the truth. To people who forgot what living really looked like, Jesus is the life. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus, the Word who created it all, stepped into creation to remind us of the glory we once knew. And with every wrong he righted, his light pushed back the darkness. Who is Jesus? He is God. He was there at the very beginning of everything, working to bring it all into existence. And 2,000 years ago, he became a human being. The Creator stepped into his creation. He put on skin and bones, flesh and blood. He walked on two legs and left his footprints in the real sands of Judea. He was born in a Bethlehem barn to poor parents in an oppressed nation under the boot of a ruthless empire. Jesus spent the first 30 years of his life in obscurity. While it was obvious there was something different about him, the people around him never would have guessed who he really was. To them, he would have seemed like them. He went to Hebrew school, he listened to his parents, he went to church, he worked a job, and all the other normal things people do. But he was also different, because in everything he did, 
He was fully devoted to his God and radically committed to loving and serving others. Because Jesus was no ordinary person. He was God in human form. You see, Jesus is the light who shines in the darkness and gives light to everyone. That's who Jesus is. But what is it that he came to do? He came to do again what he had done before, to push back the darkness and bring light and life back into the world. At the age of 30, Jesus exploded onto the stage of history. He kicked off his public ministry and launched a movement that would completely remake the world. He assembled a team of 12 male disciples and a handful of female followers to join him. He told everyone who would listen that the kingdom of God had come near, a kingdom where the light always shines and darkness has no place to hide. Wherever he went, people followed because Jesus spoke with an authority that no one had ever heard before. And because everywhere he went, he did things that could only be done with the power of God. Jesus healed the sick. He gave sight to the blind. He opened deaf ears. He fed thousands, cast out demons and forgave sins. Everywhere he went, the light came with him and darkness left. You see, Jesus came to rescue what was stolen, repair what was broken, and restore what was lost. When sin and darkness invaded, we human beings were taken captive. Our relationship with God was broken and our purpose was lost. Now our lives are in ruins. Our relationships have been wrecked. God's world has been ravaged. So we're left with emptiness, wandering, searching for the more that deep down we all know we are made for. That's why Jesus came, to rescue us from sin, repair our relationship with God, and restore our purpose of partnering with him in his good plans for the world. But the way Jesus would go about doing this wasn't what anyone expected. You see, they wanted Jesus to start a revolution, a revolution that would see the corrupt religious system overturned and the Roman Empire kicked out, a revolution that would restore Israel's glory and kick off an era of unprecedented prosperity. But Jesus had a much bigger goal in mind. He wasn't content to just deal with the corruption in their religious institutions or the evil of the Roman Empire. He wanted to deal with the corruption in all of us and the evil that has ravaged the entire world. On his way to achieving this goal, Jesus would be welcomed into Jerusalem as a king, carrying the hope of a nation on his shoulders. But before the end, he would walk out of that same city condemned as a criminal, carrying the instrument of his own death on his back. With his life, Jesus brought light back into the world. Through his death, he would overcome the dark. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. Some received him, some rejected him, but none dissuaded him from his mission, to rescue us from sin and repair our relationship with God so that we could play a part in his good plan to restore the world. Out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. Jesus made God known to us. That's why his life is so important that's why his life is light to all mankind. Jesus illuminated the character and nature of God in everything he did and everything he said. He didn't rush to the cross, 
the Word walked deliberately through life down to His last week and was a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. Who is Jesus? He is the light who shines in the darkness and gives light to everyone. What did he come to do? Jesus came to rescue us from sin, repair our relationship with God, and restore our purpose of partnering with him in his good plans for the world. And in the final week of his life, what has come to be called Holy Week, Jesus showed us clearly what it looks like to live in the light of God's kingdom. He came into the city riding on the back of a donkey, fulfilling what was spoken by the prophet Zechariah, that the king of Jerusalem would arrive on a donkey's colt. Through this act, Jesus was showing the people that God is faithful to his promises and that the kingdom he rules is radically different from the kingdoms of this world. Because in God's kingdom, humility is celebrated and the lowly are elevated. Shortly after his arrival, Jesus made his way to the temple, the center of God's worship in Israel. And he cleared out the people who were using God's house as a way to stuff their pockets. Why? Because God's kingdom isn't reserved for the rich and the powerful, but the doors are wide open for the poor and the desperate. Multiple times during this final week, Jesus is tested by the religious leaders because everything he is doing and everything that he is saying threatens their power and position in society. So they try to shut him down, but instead they're the ones put in their place. In love, Jesus calls out their hypocrisy and reminds them that God cares far more about humble hearts devoted to him than extravagant performances done for him. On the night before his death, Jesus shares a final meal with his disciples. During this meal, Jesus, who is the Lord of all creation, takes the role of a servant. He removes his robe, wraps a towel around his waist, and he washes the feet of all 12 of his disciples, knowing that one would soon betray him, another would deny him, and the rest would abandon him. Here, Jesus was showing that his love is unconditional. He loves you no matter what, with no strings attached. And then just before he's taken into captivity, Jesus brings his followers to a garden to spend his last free moments praying to God the Father. Jesus knows the pain that is just around the corner, the suffering and humiliation he is about to endure. But instead of running from it, he prepares himself in the presence of God to face it head on with dignity and courage, knowing that his sacrifice will bring life and light into the whole world. Soon, the sound of armed guards interrupted his final moment with his closest friends. Jesus was arrested. He's put on trial and he is condemned to death on a cross, a death reserved for criminals, traitors, and slaves. This is how Jesus' life would end. The Creator would suffer and die at the hands of His own creation. Which brings us to our final question. Why did Jesus have to die? Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they slapped him in the face. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull. There they crucified him. and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened it to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. You don't turn off the light to get rid of the dark. So why did Jesus have to die? 
couldn't the light of the world have found another way? The final cranny of creation that needed to see the light of life was death itself. He had to go to the grave to get his light in the darkest place. The Word made flesh humbled himself to the point of death, even death on a cross. The Creator allowed himself to be killed by the very people he created, and the powers of darkness celebrated. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit.